What's up guys? I hope everyone's doing well. It's been a busy summer here, but I know I'm starting to get the itch to get out and do some summer filming. Uh, I was recently going through, I, I found the very first laptop I ever purchased, I think back towards the end of my high school years. And I always wanted to try to get the footage off of it, um, but naturally it doesn't turn on anymore. So I, I recently took the hard drive out of it and came across some of this old footage, uh, basically my first really good buck kill that I ever filmed. Naturally, looking back, it's pretty rough, um, but it, it kind of reminded me just why I started filming and why I'm so glad to be able to just have that documentation. Um, so I figured you'd get a kick out of that and I'll, I'll show that footage here. Um, but just so cool, it's obviously rough footage, but you know, it captured what I needed to back then. It, you know, got my grandpa's voice in the recovery. And, nice shot um, through the lungs and what a nice rack, wow just a, a really cool memory to look back on and see where it all started. Actually on that laptop, it, so that wasn't the first camera I started with. I had filmed a couple of doe kills before and it was a little handy cam that recorded to little mini DV um, tapes. And on the laptop, I actually found the receipt to the, to the next camera. I bought a little Samsung handy cam that recorded to an SD card. Um, so kind of funny just to look and see $154, $155 camera. Um, just again, cool to look back and see where it all started. But I remember when I was doing some research into starting filming, I, uh, I found a guy that, was made, that made a little homemade bow stabilizer camera mount. So that's how I was filming my hunts. It was kind of like, like the Tacticam camera mount before Tacticam. Which is a, I don't know how much, probably just paid 10 or $20 for it on eBay. Um, and then it just had a little threaded screw to mount the camera onto. And that's how I film. Like every, anywhere I was pointing my bow, that's how I was filming. And you know, of course, I would do a, an occasional interview here and there just to, to narrate it. But it was such a simple setup. And that's where I got started. And so I, I got to thinking after kind of going through this, you know, obviously one of the most common questions I get pretty much nonstop is camera stuff. How do you get into filming? What camera do you recommend? What mic do you recommend? All that type of stuff. And I, you know, while I may not be the best at keeping up with it, um, I do enjoy helping people get out and get started uh, in that realm of filming. It's, uh, it's something obviously I'm very passionate about and I'm big um, advocate for. I mean, I, I think people should film their hunts uh, if they're willing and able, you know, not for a lot of the reasons maybe some people think. Um, so I was just thought it'd be cool to do a short video first on three simple reasons um, that I think you should either continue to film or get started filming if you never have. And the first one is, you know, looking back at what I spent, I'm not saying you could spend that today, but it is more affordable than what you think. You know, the first question I ask someone once they ask me for a gear recommendation is what their budget is because there are a lot of different ranges there on what you can spend. And it all depends on how in depth you want to be, like how, what, what type of audio quality do you want? What type of zoom capability you want? What, you know, how you want to go 4K or HD footage. A um, lot of different options. You can spend anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to a few thousand pretty easily. Um, it just kind of comes down to what you're wanting out of it. If you're simply wanting something to capture the memory and document it in its rawest form, you don't have to spend very much. Um, technology has gotten pretty dang good in these cameras these days that they're packing a lot into some pretty low budget cameras. Um, and same thing with all the accessories, you know, mics and um, SD cards and batteries, all that stuff. 
has gone down in price overall from a filming perspective. And like I said, one of the most common questions I get all the time are um, around gear recommendations. So what I'm gonna try to do, uh, it's July 7th now as I'm filming this, one of the times of the year where I spend more money on camera gear than anything else is Amazon Prime Day, which is coming up here in just a few days. Um, it's a good time to save a few dollars on different electronic items like this. So I'm going to try to do a follow up video to this one with some more specific gear recommendations and links to Amazon. So that way, if you want to save some money while they're having their their annual sale, um, you can do that and uh, just make sure you're subscribed, obviously, so you can see that because I'm not going to be able to get that out very soon before that sale starts. Uh, so you definitely want to be notified on that one. Um, but anyway, I can help out with regards to gear recommendations and what to buy. You know, I'd love to do that. So um, that's number one. It's more affordable than you think. And the second reason or benefit to filming, and I think this one's a little bit underrated and not talked about very much, but there's a, a very high level of education that you can get from your footage, from the stuff that you capture out in the field. Um, one obvious one is shot review, right? So you can go back and look at the shot and know exactly where that, that arrow hit or bullet hit or whatever, help make tracking decisions. And I can't tell you how many times where I've been, let's say with a buddy or something, and I just wish I could have seen the shot. I mean, I, I feel like you'd have so much more knowledge as to how to take up a blood trail, when to take up a blood trail, if you could see exactly how the deer deer was oriented, um, how that arrow entered, how did, was it a pass through, um, what was the, the deer's reaction, you know, how, where did he leave the field at, all those types of things that when you're in the moment and you're not filming and you're, you're trying to make that shot by yourself, whatever, there's so much going on and it's really hard to recall those little details, but they're so important, especially when it comes to tracking. So I'm, I'm willing to bet that I've been on some blood trails with other people that if we had a little bit more knowledge, um, potentially that would have resulted in a recovered deer um, rather than one that got away. So that's an obvious one, but another thing is just learning deer behavior and, and little mannerisms that they have whether it's um you know one example would be a, a deer's body language and the the direction of their ears and during a certain um event maybe it's on a shot maybe it's just you know an encounter when you're calling at him and you couldn't tell if he could hear you or not but if you have footage to review you can look at all those little things stuff that you didn't maybe pick up in the field you can go back, look at that and kind of be like, oh, he definitely heard, you know, he turned his ears, even though he didn't turn his body and react, he definitely heard me call to him. Um, things like that, it's, uh, again, sounds simple, and, it, it, and sometimes they are things that you can observe in the field, but a lot of times I've come back and, and picked up things, you know, when I get back to my computer, I'm looking at the footage after, a, after an evening hunt or whatever it is, um, you know, and things that I can take into the field with me, that extra knowledge to, to maybe have a different outcome the next time around. So that second benefit of being able to review footage uh, really can make you a better hunter uh, from filming your hunts. And the third and final one, even though I have a lot more reasons that I film um, and would advocate others to film, I wanted to kind of keep this list short and sweet. But this third one is simply the documentation of your outdoor adventures. Being able to relive those at any time. Um, that is the reason that I love filming. And it's the reason that I will continue to film as long as I can. Even if no one ever watches another one of my hunts or videos ever again, I will always take a camera to the woods. I'm, I'm that passionate about it and I'm that much of a believer in having all that documented to relive you know I, it's so cool going back through some of this footage and i think over the years uh how fortunate i was to have a camera with me um there's such a big difference in one you know 
you get back to camp or whatever, you get back to your family. I remember those first days of filming hunts when I'd get home to talk, tell my dad about my hunt. It was a eye-opening experience for me to say, dad, look what I saw, instead of trying to tell him what I saw. It was just a way different reaction. Um, it was just a more powerful, you know, kind of show and tell type of conversation. Um, but just, just having that footage for other people to somewhat relive too, um, and, and try to put them in your shoes is, is such a cool thing. And also looking back to, you know, the fact that pretty much every buck I've ever killed, I can pull it up right now and it puts me right back in those shoes with every single detail. And yeah, certainly your memory can do that to a certain extent, you know, how, how you remember certain experiences, but that obviously fades away too and you, you miss little details. You know, I still pull up old hunts, old encounters and stuff like that, that I had forgot about or forgot the details of. And because it's all documented on video, it's, it puts me right back into that spot. And you know, at the end of the day, we all know why we do that. We love those encounters, those adventures. Um, and it, it, it's like being able to relive those at any time just seems like a no brainer to me. And again, that is why I will continue to film my hunts for as long as possible. Um, so I, I couldn't be a bigger advocate if for any other reason than that one. The ability to relive every single moment you've had in the outdoors because it's captured on film is a pretty special thing. So like I said, I'll have more stuff coming out soon. I'm gonna try to run through you know a short gear review list before Amazon Prime Day coming up here pretty soon and link to all those. Um, and again, I also love helping people out with, you know, whatever type of filming questions you might have. So feel free to reach out, you know, I'll try to stay on top and respond to everything. Um, I'll probably prioritize those of you that are following and subscribed here. Um, but feel free to reach out to me directly too. And, um, I'll, I'll help as much as I can on that type of stuff. But, uh, if you're not already filming your hunts, I highly recommend getting into it. It uh, it's, doesn't have to be as complex and complicated as you may think. You know, I think some guys have that perception of really the only reason to film your hunt is for a show. And, and in my mind, that couldn't be further from the truth. There's a, so many more benefits to it um, just for the everyday hunter. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching and we'll talk to you soon.